Hello, everyone. Um, I am starting on my vocabulary diamond. I started while the computer was warming up. <laughs> because I have to hustle off today to go get us some glaze for our Christmas cups, our holiday cups that we're making. Our hot chocolate holders that we're creating. So... I got a little head start. I did the back side of my diamond off camera. Okay, so this week we are reading one of my favorite stories in our reading book. It is such a great story and it's always in, it was in the reading book at my last school. It's in fourth grade reading books in California because it tells the story of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. And so it's kind of, I guess you would call it historical fiction. And it's a, the story is so dramatic and so scary. The first time I read it, it was in our reading book, and we were only reading a little sliver of it. And my class insisted that I buy the book so that we could find out what happened to the characters. So now I do it as a read aloud every year because it's a really awesome book. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start by writing my name at the top of the page. Um, the 1906 earthquake affected not just San Francisco, it affected the entire Bay Area and was felt all the way to Oregon and all the way to Nevada. It was such a large earthquake. And one of the reasons why it's such an important part of California history is because it caused um, so much destruction that after the earthquake, there was a huge boom in construction and there was a boom in architecture. A lot of San Francisco and a lot of buildings in the Bay Area had to be rebuilt. And so it caused um, the economy in California to really grow. And it drew a lot of architects and a lot of creative people to California to rebuild San Francisco and also um, other buildings in the Bay Area. So it's kind of it was a destructive event, but it also was a constructive event. It, it is an event in history that caused a lot of change to happen, um, as particularly to San Francisco. Um, so the story we're going to read is from the viewpoint of, it's told from two different viewpoints. Um, there were many, many, many Chinese immigrants that came to California during the gold rush. And there was a law passed um, called the Chinese Exclusion Act, which caused a lot of people to get trapped here. Um, you couldn't really, uh, there were people who had come here to look for gold because things in China were really dire. And so a lot of men and boys came to California looking for gold because they felt that they could find some gold and then they could head back to their homeland of China and that they would be able to save their families. Um, there was a lot of famine and a lot of hardship happening in many parts of China around the time when gold was discovered. So um, then what happened is there was a lot of racism, of course, when Chinese people were finding success and were having being successful. It caused a lot of other people to be jealous and angry and racist. And there was an act passed called the Chinese Exclusion Act, which made it so that Chinese people could not come to the United States anymore. So what happened is a lot of people got stuck in California. A lot of immigrants wanted to take their money and go back to China, but they knew that if they did that, they would not be able to come back to the United States ever again. So it, that law caused a lot of hardship in California. 
Um, also, a lot of Chinese people came to California after the gold rush to help out um, working on the railroad. Um, and so we have a really rich history of Chinese immigration um, in our state. We also have a really rich history of racism against Chinese immigrants in our state. That's kind of the dark, darker part of our, our state's history. So this story is told from the viewpoint of a Chinese gentleman who is very poor, that is the servant of a wealthy white man who is, is, has a lot of riches. So the story is told from the viewpoint of the man who has a lot of wealth and his Chinese servant. And what's really awesome about this, the novel is that it switches back and forth in viewpoints. Both of the characters, both the wealthy white man and the poor Chinese servant have sons that are the same age and they like each other and they play together. And so the story is told from the viewpoint of a wealthy person, what happens to that wealthy person during the earthquake and the poor servant, what happens to him and to his family, his son during the earthquake. So it's really a great story and um, really describes the earthquake very well. First word is definitely an earthquake word, that's wreckage. Wreckage is a noun. And my synonym I got was havoc. And it's the, the remains or fragments of destruction. So the San Francisco earthquake happened at about five in the morning. And what happened is a lot of buildings were made of brick and a lot of buildings were made out of wood and the buildings did not survive the earthquake very well. So a lot of buildings fell down, especially a lot of the brick buildings fell down. Buildings in 1906 were heated by gas. So you would have a gas line that went into your house. There was not electricity. Um, everyone's lighting worked off of gas. Their stoves were gas stoves. So everyone used gas. What happened is the gas lines broke during the earthquake and then people lit fires. They lit fires to be able to cook they lit fires to be able to see, like using lanterns. If you have a broken gas line and you light a fire, you're gonna have an explosion. And so what happened is there was all of these buildings that had fallen down, so there were just piles of wreckage. And then gas mains were broken. The gas mains were like underground and also um, in the walls of buildings. So we could draw a little building here that has fallen down. And so when the earthquake cut the gas lines and then someone came along and maybe they needed a light to see if there was someone in the wreckage that was buried, they used a light and that caused a fire, right? So big, huge fires. The whole city caught on fire. Then the fires merged and became one big fire. So not only was there crumbling wreckage of, of houses and buildings that had fallen down, but then there was a fire that burned all of the wreckage and basically the fire just rushed through the in, entire city. Our next word is crust. Crust is a noun. Layer is our synonym. And so crust is the outer layer of the earth. It's also the outside of a piece of bread.
And so okay. if we were to draw our picture of, remember we drew our picture and we had, this is the crust, right? And then we had a layer of slush. And then we had the mantle. And then we had the outer core. And then we had the inner core, right? And so this right here was the crust. It was the outer layer. Okay, landform is our next word. So a landform is a specific feature on Earth's surface. Like a mountain, or a valley, or a lake. And there is really no synonym for a landform. So I, I a landform is a landform, and there's really no other word. When you look, go on dictionary.com or thesaurus.com, that's it. That's all she wrote, right? Landform is it. So um, a landform could be, you could draw some mountains, Right, and then you might have like a little stream coming out of the mountains and it might kind of become a larger river, right? And then you might have like some grasslands. Right, and so you have some mountains up here. So a landform is really something that is a feature that's on the Earth's surface. All right, our next word is timbers. Shiver me timbers. Timbers are a noun. <clears throat> and it is, um, I use beam as the synonym. And timbers are the wood used to build structures. So um, my sister used to live in San Francisco um, and I used to visit her all the time when I was in high school. And she lived right beneath um, that the statue that is the, or the building that is called Coit Tower, it is a replica of a fire nozzle and it was built in honor of the firemen that put out the fire in 1906, all the fires, and saved the city. And um, my sister's house was really old. You could tell that it was earlier than 1906. It looked earlier than 1906. And a lot of the poorer people's houses or tenements in San Francisco were built up on stilts. So they would take wooden timbers and they would drive them into the ground and then they would build a house on top of that. And the house also kind of had timbers that were supporting it. Like there might be cross timbers. So my sister's house was kind of felt really rickety and shaky to me. Like whenever I stayed there, I felt like when the wind blew, <laughs> you could feel her house moving. So it was built on these pilings that were driven into the ground. And then it had stair a staircase on the back side of the house. There were windows. And then it had like an exit on the back. Like there were stairs that came down the outside of the house on the back side. And then stairs that would come down here as well. And I suspect that when we're talking ab in, about this story, 
a lot of homes were built the same way in San Francisco. And so um, the timbers, the good part about the timbers is that they were flexible. So when the earthquake happened, a lot of the timbers swayed, the houses swayed back and forth and they were able to spring back into shape, right? Because they swayed back and forth and they didn't snap. The bad part about having houses built of and tenements built of timbers was that when the fires came through, they just burnt. So I'm not sure if my sister's apartment was built right after the earthquake or was built before the earthquake. It looked kind of like it was before the earthquake, but I could be wrong. But it was it was definitely built on timbers that were driven into the ground. And it was also made of timbers. It was made of wood. And then there was like stucco on the outside of it. So timbers are just the wood that's used to build a structure. And lots of buildings in San Francisco in 1906 were built of wood because San Francisco was really small. When the gold rush happened, San Francisco was not a big city. It was like a little tiny village. And then as more and more people came to go to the gold fields, San Francisco just became this crazy boom town and there was tons of building. And um, so it went from being kind of a rural village with a few little houses to being this big, huge city with tons of houses piled on top of each other. And so in by 1906, the city was quite large because the gold rush was in gold was discovered in 1848. So there had been about 60 or 65 years of growth of the city. So when the earthquake happened, it did a lot of damage because San Francisco was a fairly big city by then. All right, we're going to go to the next side and we have trembles. Trembles is a verb. And trembles means, well, the synonym is shudder. Shake is a good synonym as well. You could do either one. And it means to shake with quick, short motion. So um, nowadays we have, um, we can measure earthquakes. Um, it was a little more difficult in the past to measure earthquakes, but nowadays um, they are, there are sensors that are placed in the ground near earthquake faults. And just like we talked about with volcanoes. And so we can measure. And in the old days, they kind of used this machine called a seismograph that would it had a little needle and the needle was kind of small and would show if there was an earthquake and then it would show little tiny earthquakes and aftershocks and so we live right near one of the largest organizations that um that measures earthquakes and it's called the US Geological Survey and it's located in the Bay Area in uh, Menlo Park. I used to live in Menlo Park and so it was down the road from me and so um, there are earthquakes all the time happening in California constantly but they're usually really small so you don't feel them so there are trembles when you look at what's happening um, with um, measuring on a seismograph, you'll see like little tiny trembles. And then when there's a big earthquake, there will be larger movement. But we have a lot of movement because we have a lot of earthquake faults in California. So there are constantly little tiny earthquakes all the time that we just don't feel. Our next word is slab. Slab is a noun. Slab is a clay word too, isn't it? 
and hunk was our synonym and it is a flat thick piece of stone or cement concrete so um, there were a lot of slabs of rock and slabs of concrete that were had fallen apart that were part of the wreckage from the destruction of the earthquake so a slab is like a big sometimes it can be a foundation so a building might be built on top of a slab of concrete and so sometimes if there's an earthquake the slab can break apart right and it can break apart pretty severely All right so um, you're gonna see that there's lots of wreckage and there's lots of destruction and you're gonna hear them talk about slabs and you're gonna hear them talk about timbers these are all kind of building words because we're going to have a lot of buildings that get destroyed. Um, our next word is tenement. So a tenement is a noun. It is a, an overcrowded apartment house. And usually the people that live in a tenement are poor. In fact, very poor. So in this story, tenements were tall in San Francisco. Oh, we have to slum is our... So tenements were really tall in San Francisco. Tall and thin. So you would have a first floor and then you would have many floors on top of that, right? So you'd have like another family would live here and there would be stairs inside or outside at the back that went up. And so a tenement had many different levels. So you're going to see in the story that the Chinese family lives in a tenement. They live in Chinatown and they live in a building that's really crowded. There are a lot of people, Chinese people living in this apartment building and it has several stories. And when the earthquake happens, this, the levels of the apartment are just going to pancake and collapse on top of each other. So the only people, the people that are on this floor are in big trouble because the whole apartment is going to collapse onto them. The people that are on this floor are going to fall, right? Kapow, the, their floor is going to give way and they're going to collapse onto people here, which is horrible to even think about. They're going to get crushed by these people. Their floor is going to collapse and land on top of so every layer is going to collapse and concertina down. And so there's going to be bodies of people that are dead. There's going to be bodies of people that are still surviving that are really seriously, severely injured. And the people who are on top are going to survive because their fall is going to get cushioned by all the rubble and all of the... Um, stuff that's in the apartments below, right? So a tenement usually had many different stories or floors and levels, and um, usually they were built really poorly. Like they were built out of cheap, poor materials um, because poor people were going to live in them. So they didn't use fancy materials. They used the cheapest materials they could find. So in the San Francisco earthquake, these buildings were the first to collapse, for starters, like a lot of them collapsed, but then the fire came through. If they didn't collapse, 
the fire came through and burned a lot of them. So there were not a lot of tenements that survived the earthquake. Okay, last word is debris, which is a noun. Rubble is our synonym. And debris is the ruins after a destructive event. So um, one of the problems that happened with San Francisco is that um, San Francisco is on a peninsula and once the fires got started one of the things they tried to do to stop the fires is they tried to build fire breaks so they would blow up houses in the city because they thought that if they could blow up houses and clear the area they would leave a, a fire break where the fire couldn't burn anything the fire would stop because there would be nothing for it to burn so they decided to start blowing up houses all along Van Ness Avenue. Van Ness Avenue is um, one of the main streets. It's a really big street in San Francisco. And nowadays, it's the street with all the car dealerships on it. <laughs> if you've shopped for a car in San Francisco, you've been on Van Ness Avenue. It's a really big, major wide street. Well, what they decided to do, because it was such a wide street, they decided to blow up houses on either side and make that street an area where the fire couldn't jump. It couldn't burn to other parts of the city. Well, what happened is they used like way too much dynamite. And so instead of making a fire break, they made a giant wall of fire because the dynamite that they used was too powerful. So all along Van Ness Avenue, if we were to draw Van Ness Avenue, we didn't have lines like this back in 1906 because cars were new. Um, there were just wagons on the streets. So there were like piles of debris. And because they blew up, they destroyed tons of houses that were on either side. There were these beautiful old houses and they just came in and they said, okay, you can't live here anymore. And then they blew up the house. And so there were piles of rubble. And so in some places where they didn't use dynamite that was too strong, it kind of worked. It made a fire break so the fire couldn't get past. Like here's the fire and the fire can't really get, there's nothing to really burn. There's no fuel for the fire. So the road did kind of stop. The It was kind of a, in certain places, the debris kind of kept the fire from, from getting food to burn, right? So fires work from oxygen and also something has to be there for the fire to burn. So um, on certain parts of Van Ness Avenue, their plan worked. The sad part is, is there were some really beautiful houses that were just blown up. And so we don't have those houses anymore. They survived the earthquake. <laughs> they were like really well made and really beautifully built. Um, and they survived the earthquake, but then they didn't survive the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers that blew them, blew them up, blew them to kingdom come. All right, I hope you enjoyed um, learning a little bit about the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, and I hope you enjoy the story. It's really an exciting story that it's it's super well written, um, and so you'll feel like you're actually in the 1906 earthquake when you're reading it. And I think that's why it ends up in fourth grade reading books too, because the writing in it is super exciting and super terrifying and pretty wonderful and descriptive. All right. Thanks for joining me.